This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Thank you for joining us today. I'm James Just. Next to me is John Cameron. Down at the other end is Richard Fields. Gentlemen, we are had an interesting decision by the Supreme Court come down. I don't know if it was today or yesterday or over the weekend, but they decided that the inhumane treatment of a prisoner violated clearly established law. But what's the, for us, what we, that's a, and it's kind of a chink in the armor of qualified immunity. They no longer have to have a specific case in order for the qualified immunity that agents of the government get if they are violating someone's basic rights. And maybe, John, you're the lawyer of the group. Maybe you can help explain it. I'm better. not a lawyer. I'm well, not... you're the lawyerly type. Well, I don't know if I like that label. Quit, 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 you know, quit uh, you know, casting aspersions on my friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would show you. I don't have belly scales, so I can't be a lawyer. I, I, don't, I don't have belly scales. Uh, don't show it. I do have a, a, a tail and cloven hoofs, but uh, no, no belly scales. So... Qualified immunity was made out of whole cloth, and I think in 1983, and and there was one court case 16 years ago, um, the Supreme Court signed off on where you didn't have to have an exact match of circumstance. You know, it got so bad in some cases that, you know, if if a, a crazy example, if a cop, you know, strangled somebody left-handed, they got away with it because there was no precedence if. If, if somebody strangled somebody else right-handed. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but that's the way it felt. And this poor guy was a, a prisoner who was kept in one cell uh, coated in feces. And I'm trying to think of the, I don't even want to think about that. And I mean, the water tap that he had to drink out was in feces. Everything was the floor, the ceiling, the wall, and everything. And then they moved him to another cell that was uh, freezing cold, uh, with backed up sewage and um, and the lower court, the Fifth Circuit. Where's the Fifth Circuit? Do you remember, Richard? Fifth no, Circuit's usually a pretty that's decent that's circuit, I think, compared to the Ninth. Uh, they said that, uh, you know, qualified immunity uh, still held um, because there was yeah, no the, the, precedent. The background on it is the prisoner was suing because yeah. this is inhumane treatment. Yeah. And the uh, guards were saying, ah, no, no, you can't sue us. We have qualified immunity. Yeah. Anyway, the, so Fifth Circuit said, yeah, the guards have qualified immunity. And they were laughing at this guy as they were basically torturing him. And then um, over a period of five or six days, and then the Supreme Court sent it back to the, the lower court saying, no, this, this is a, a clear example of uh, people violating, uh, um, the guards violating somebody's constitutional rights. So they didn't really, they didn't really go after the qualified immunity part, but they sent it back, uh, kind of an end run about qualified immunity, saying this guy's, this guy's constitutional rights were clearly violated by these guards. So I don't know how it's going to come out of the court, but you know. The, the well, it, it, it came out. I mean, the Supreme Court said, uh, you know, this case can go forward. That's that's what it was all about. It's a civil yeah. case going forward, and uh, the uh, you know, like you said, they they did not overrule the doctrine of qualified immunity. They just said this case is so horrendous that uh, the qualified immunity doesn't apply. Hmm. Well, and then then that that is that is a good thing because most of the cases that that um, we see in the press are you know horrendous. Uh, um, or horrendous, the way people's treatments, people being strangled, you know, the uh, DAs um, you know, withholding uh, exculpatory evidence. Wait, I think, I think a vice presidential candidate was guilty of that and escaped scot-free. And um, so those those kinds of cases, I mean, if, if one goes, let's see how the other ones go. I mean... Um, it's, a, it's a baby step in the right direction. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's one of these things that once it starts getting down that road, once you start heading down that right path, it gets easier as it goes along to start actually start fixing this problem. Because yeah. it was, as you said, they invented it out of whole cloth. They just found a way to make government agents not responsible for violating people's basic human rights. And that that could never stand long term. It had to actually have at some point start working its way back. It's just a matter of 
of when. It's sad that it had to take, what, 40 years almost. To, one, to one would hope. One would hope. But it's still, like you said, baby steps, and, and every step is a step in the right direction. And, you know, that, I think, a great – never mind. We'll get oh. track. But I agree uh, that, that it is a, a good step in the right direction. When some somebody's basic human rights and rights, you know, enumerated in, in the Constitution about – uh, uh, inhane in, or inhumane punishment. Um, I don't know if they use that word in the Constitution. Um, or the cruel and unusual is what they use. Cruel and unusual. Cruel and unusual. Um, that's a good first step. Good yeah, first step. I, I think that's where, well, talk about a bad first step. This weekend, we saw some massive hypocrisy on both the Republicans and Democrat sides as, a, as Donald Trump supporters. They have both um, blocked a bus, a Joe Biden bus somewhere in Texas, prevented it from getting to a to a rally. And they've also done some uh, slowdowns and blocking traffic. I mean, I think they did it at a bridge in New York and that they had a 95 mile an hour Trump train somewhere in the Midwest blocking traffic. Not, not 95 mile an hour, 95 mile long Trump train, I guess, a 95 mile long stream of cars somewhere through the Midwest. That's but a lot of but they're blocking traffic now. That now you've got Trump people blocking traffic, harassing people in public. It's essentially they've been doing what the Democrats have been doing for the last three years: harassing people in restaurants, blocking traffic, attacking cars. But now the Republicans are apparently doing it, and now the Democrats are all upset. The Republicans are doing it. It's just massive hypocrisy on both sides. I just you know you want to say a pox on both your houses. Hmm. Well, I think it's have. it's uh, it's hypocrisy because you know what goes from what. Uh, uh, what's good for the goose is not good for the gander, but it's also uh, a, a, a symbol of the breakdown of civility, the breakdown of civilization itself, when we can't have civil discourse because we disagree politically. Uh, it's bad enough that one political side is trying to, in effect, uh, r run roughshod over the other, and that applies to both Democrats and Republicans. Uh, it's, it's, it's worse when they are thwarting, they're actively thwarting the free expression of ideas, the free movement of people, etc. This is uh, a, a, a symbol, of, I think, of the, of the breakdown of civilization itself, uh, at least in the United States. I agree. And the, the, you know, there's lots of evidence of it. And the political, political machinations of it, the, 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 what comes to mind first is the 150 days. It's probably even more of rioting in, in uh, Portland. And, you know, basically, uh, you know, the cops are told not to protect private property and people are told to stay away from a certain area because it's basically a law-free zone. Um, and that was promulgated by a, you know, very uh, uh, democratic mayor and, and all the rest of that. Portland's always been that way. Um, but well, not always, uh, you know, Oregon was, uh, uh, had laws on the books against black people even living in, in the state and owning property until pretty late in the game. So that's uh, another example of hypocrisy. Now, um, you know, apparently, uh, uh, anything the other way is good, but it's there, the examples of it are becoming worse and worse and worse. And the favoritism based upon who's ever in political power and the geography where it's happening you know, it's okay if our guys do it, if I'm in charge, it, your guys can't do it. And 20 miles away, the opposite is true. And that, that when, when people who are elected officials whose job is to keep uh, uh, everybody uh, uh, protected by the rule of law, throw that out because it's their people doing the bad stuff, you know, it's not just a breakdown of civility, but it's a breakdown of rule of law. And that's that's what's annoying to me as well. Yeah. Yeah, And well, you're eventually going to reap what you sow. If you, you sow harassment and discontent and you accept that, you know, your side can block people from a, attending rallies or attending a speaker. Well, then eventually the other side's solution to that is to do the same to you. It's, yeah, I mean, we see the same thing on campus. We see the left uh, engaging in cancel culture, making sure that... Uh, People on the right can't uh, be allowed to speak on college campuses. Uh, well, that's that's fine for them in the short term, but in the long term, they won't always control those college campuses, and the the same kind of tactics can be applied by the right against the left uh, just as just as easily. And uh, you know, we call that uh, fascism. Well, it's mm -hmm. fascism from the right. It's also fascism from the left. 
no difference. Yeah, I actually had a, read an article, I think Friday, from the socialists, the American socialists, and they were agreeing with libertarians on this issue of free speech that this assault on people who canceling people who disagree with you and harassing people who disagree with you politically, it for them, he says, it always ends up coming back to us. So we can't support that kind of thing because the next people who are who get attacked are always us. So mm -hmm. so they actually understand that it's those people who complain about the powers of government who are always going to be in the firing line when you give government this kind of power. And so as we talk about power and discussion, um, social media hijinks down the stretch. I know the Libertarian Party has had social media accounts, what, disconnected, abandoned, uh, punishment. I have a lot of friends who can't have complex communication activities with some groups for like till November 28th or something. They've, they've really been playing a number on libertarian uh, politics. Libertarians and conservatives, uh, to be fair. I, uh, I, you know, I got locked out of my Facebook account. I didn't do anything that I'm aware of. I got locked out on a, on a uh, through, a, you know, I just didn't, I tried to log in and I didn't have the right, I tried to log in and they wanted me to do a second, a third party uh, authentication to uh, confirm who I was. And then they, you know, which was, you know, sending a text, uh, texting me a number on my phone. Well, the number never came. And so, well, okay, now you need to, uh, uh, send a you know a copy of your driver's license, and so I did that, and they haven't responded. So I'm just thinking that they'll probably respond probably on November fourth, uh, mm -hmm. after it's uh, too late for me to do anything that would uh, affect the election in any way whatsoever. Second thing that happened is I you know I went back, I resorted to Twitter, and I tried I tried to tweet uh, a uh, story about uh, about. Uh, uh, Glenn Greenwald, who is the founder of Intercept. Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald is the guy who originally published the Edward Snowden story. He's the guy that Edward Snowden trusted to uh, put the story out there uh, and get it past censorship when Greenwald was working for The Guardian in uh, Great Britain. Uh, Greenwald went on to found The Intercept, which uh, uh, unmasked and did a, did a number on Bolsonaro, the right wing uh, president of, of, uh, of Brazil, he's now based in Brazil, founded The Intercept to do that. The Inter you know, Greenwald is a, you know, a gay guy, you know, a pretty bit of a fair journalist. Uh, the Intercept was staffed with a bunch of uh, left-leaning uh, journalists. And when Greenwald said, this Hunter Biden story needs to be uh, out there, he wrote a long expose on what was going on with Hunter Biden and the fact that he was essentially uh, trading in, in uh, uh, favors from his father. Uh, for getting things, make, making things happen in Ukraine and China, uh, business-wise, uh, you know, it's it's corruption. It's the selling of influence, uh, and it needs to be uh, it needs to be publicized. When he tried to publish it, the ISF, the, the company, the organization, the web uh, news site that he founded, said, "No, you can't publish that. We're not going to let it happen uh, without uh, essentially amending or editing all of the meat out of it." So he said, to hell with that. I quit The Intercept and, and, and sent it out in a, in a uh, essentially a, a tweet, a Twitter, uh, a, a, uh, an email. And I tried to copy that and, and, and post it on Twitter. I sent it to uh, John. You tried to open it. Didn't open it. Uh, Page doesn't and, exist. Page doesn't yeah, exist. Yeah. 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 And, and eventually it came back. But I'm guessing that's what, what's happening there is that uh, Twitter is throttling the uh, – Kind of uh, narrative that is harmful to uh, Biden and the uh, and the Democrats. That's uh, what it appears to be happening. It appears to be happening. Naturally, the Republicans, who are of course also being throttled, are upset about it. So they uh, held hearings in the Senate uh, this past week, uh, where they were uh, basically uh, giving, you know, reading the Riot Act to uh, Zuckerberg from uh, Facebook, uh, Dorsey from uh, Twitter. And some guy from from uh, from uh, Google, uh, you know, telling them that hey, what's going on here? How come you guys are, are you know, cutting us off? What's going? You know, why are you censoring us? Uh, the Democrats were saying, well, it's okay. It's all about Russian, you know, Russian influence. So you know, you guys are doing the right thing. Mike Lee asked a really interesting question. Mike Lee is a, a senator, Republican senator from Utah. And he uh, asked all three of the of the uh, representatives, Zuckerberg, Dorsey, and the Twitter guy or the uh, Google guy, can you give me one example, one, just one example, 
of somebody, either organization or person on the left or on the liberal side that has been uh, censored like all of these dozens of uh, Republican and conservative sites. He didn't mention libertarian, but he could have. Can you mention, can you name just one? They couldn't. I mean, uh, the uh, Zuckerberg and, and Dorsey absolutely could, came up with nada, nothing. They said, well, we'll have to get back to you on that. Uh, the guy from Google said, well, I think the socialist workers got uh, muscled at one point hmm. on YouTube or something. That was it. They, they couldn't come up with anybody. So we're looking at social media, which is doing the dirty work of uh, the uh, uh, mainstream media. We have uh, social media essentially echoing mainstream media. Uh, and uh, I include Fox in, in mainstream media to, the, to a large extent. I mean, they, 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 uh, they support conservatives, but they don't do uh, a heck of a lot for libertarians other than Kennedy and a few uh, a few uh, you know occasions when we actually uh, as libertarians get on Fox uh, main you know the, the liberal the left liberal media everybody except Fox has kept the Jorgensen campaign off the air in its entire for the entirety of the campaign we get coverage fair coverage uh, at the local level uh, from local TV stations from local radio stations from local newspapers absolutely nothing from the uh, anybody at the national level other than Fox. What I find, I agree with everything you said, Bridget, what I find uh, very disheartening about this is the, the again, you talked about hypocrisy, James, and, and double standards. Uh, they're, they're saying the mainstream media and uh, social media are saying they can't, um, they can't uh, uh, pursue or, or publish the the Biden information because none of it's been proven. But I remember a, a little thing about uh, Russian influence in the last election that not, not only was never proven, was but was basically uh, made up um, by Hillary Clinton requesting a dossier to be created that uh, came near to impeaching a president. And there was never, never any proof anywhere in any of that. And the only criminal standings or criminal charges that came out of the whole mess were people lying to Congress and those things have been thrown out. So, uh, and lying to the and, FBI huh? and lying to the FBI. Well, yeah, but I think you're kind of, the FBI can lie to you as much as they want in an interrogation. Yeah. You lie to the FBI. It's a, it's a, it's a felony. Yeah, that's a felony. And then, um, then, then they they also uh, apparently uh, deleted the original files on um, that started the whole mess uh, because that's what they do. You know, you can't keep those old files around because there's not enough memory on the computers. So the double standards are are, are pretty frightening, and um, I think uh, Orwell would be quite comfortable with the plot that's that the, the plot of this fantasy novel that we're living right now, and uh, it is. It is a little frightening, you know, when when uh, social media uh, was uh, patted on the back uh, about uh, the Arab Spring, uh, the ability of people to to uh, communicate with each other, to fight for their freedom against the oppressive governments of whatever. But now that same social media is being used to suppress uh, people talking about um, uh, things that bother those in power. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm worried about, I'm not a big social media person, but if uh, there are no, that I'm aware of, uh, even-handed newspapers or even-handed news sources out there, and like the Republican Party we know has actually resorted to uh, creating quote-unquote news sites, and a lot of people are upset because they're basically just propaganda for the Republican Party and conservatives, but what do you do when, when you can't get your voice out in the mainstream liberal media or on social media? You have to create your own propaganda to counter it. And that's a yep. bad place. And I can yeah. say a little here is that, you know, the well, even the local media, at least here in town, they're not really journalists. Well, I, I think I've related the story here before. You know, the very first question the B editorial board asked me was, aren't I really a Republican? Mm -hmm. I mean, did you ever get any coverage? Out of, did you ever get, did your campaign ever get any coverage from the, from the Sacramento Bee at all? Well, we got, we were in their go to voter guide. We got to fill out their voter guide, but yeah. no real coverage. That's, it. That's yeah. it. So in other words, the, the entire, was, did your opponent get any coverage? Um, No, but he's not campaigning either. He doesn't have to. So yeah. <laughs> he he well, and the, the other thing that, that, um, so that comes to mind, well, it came to mind and it just disappeared out of my brain because I'm thinking about lunch. 
uh, the oh, I know what it is. Is that that of uh, the um, Joe Jorgensen in the areas where she's actually included in the polling, uh, in many cases, is polling at a higher number than polling error. But uh, she's she's not being polled hardly anywhere. So how do you know if they're not asking the question? That would be like saying, I mean, it's kind of an exaggeration numerically, but same concept. What if they didn't poll Biden? You know, then it looks like Trump's ruling the world. So uh, the, the manipulation of the polling and the, and the lamestream media and the social media, which was again seen as a, seen as a bastion for, for free expression, is, is disconcerting, to say the least. It's frightening. It's, uh, it's a little scary. Yeah, yeah the, the, there seems to be a worldwide attack on freedom of speech. In uh, Paris and over in France, they're having issues with violence related to free speech. The um, There's been some beheadings. Uh, there was yesterday or this morning, I don't know which, was a uh, gun attack by Muslim terrorists. They're all upset over the showing of a Muhammad cartoon in a free speech class. And well, they our, beheaded the teacher. That, that, not they. A, an individual beheaded the teacher who showed the cartoon in a class about free speech. I have to, I'm not a real fan of Macron, is that, that his name? Mm -hmm. But yeah. he, uh, you know, there, there was one of about three different ways to go. One would be to, you know, ask everybody to be uh, very careful of the Muslim population's feelings in, in France because it's a powder keg. They have a huge Muslim population because they, they you know, essence had lots of, colonies in in North Africa, Al Algeria and other countries and and a huge influx of uh, after they gave up their colonies an awful lot of people moved from those countries to um, to France and then they've taken an awful lot of refugees so the, the the percentage of their Muslim population is one of the highest of any uh, major Western countries. But what he what he chose to do was say, no, we're not. Freedom of speech is important to this country. You have to be able to express yourself, uh, and you can't worry about you know upsetting somebody's feelings. Uh, and that that whole idea that that uh, you know based upon religion, um, you can do these atrocious things, and that that free speech should be um, censored carries over into an unnamed religion here in, in the U.S. that's had a free rise for years, environmentalism. And, uh, you know, there's, I don't know if there's been any beheadings, but there's certainly been crimes done in, in the names of uh, Gaia or Mother Earth or all the rest of that. Maybe not as obvious as beheadings. If there were, then Well, maybe. there has been things like uh, spiking trees, which leads spiking. to uh, people being killed. So yeah. it's, yeah, it's not a direct uh, murder, but it's indirect murder. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's, it's, it's a bad thing. But I'm, I'm pleased to see the French uh, not, what, I guess, getting tough or, or at least defending free speech. It would be nice if, if people in this country did the same thing. I mean, uh, like you said, uh, James, that uh, the the people who are suppressing speech now won't always be in power, um, you know. And this this reminds me of uh, was it the Crystal Knight in the book Burnings in in uh, when the uh, the brown shirts uh, in was it in Berlin? Yeah, um, Nazi Germany, Crystal Knight. Yeah, Nazi Germany. Yeah, Crystal Knight. Crystal uh, It's not far removed from. Um, and it, and it seems like it is, but it isn't. Once you start uh, suppressing people's uh, beliefs and ability to speak and all the rest of that, it's, a, it's an easy road to seeing them as not people. And once you see them as not people, they are not people because they're Republican or they're not people because they're Democrats or they're not people because they're not green, then whatever you do to them is much easier to do when you no longer label them as human. A, a different is non-human. And the first step to that is suppression of their ideas. And that's what happened in uh, Nazi Germany. And it wasn't too many years after that that there were slave labor camps. And uh, you, know, you can say, oh, that would never happen here. And, and those things would never happen here. But we some horrible things here 
have been done in the names of safety and freedom and, and all the rest of that. Yeah. Well, 1920s Germany is one of the most progressive places in the world. And then a few short years later, they're one of the most repressive. So mm -hmm. it, it can turn on a dime. Yeah. And once you accept the reality that society gets to dictate what you as a human being can think, say, and how you can behave, mm -hmm. well, then society can tell you how to think, say what you can say and how you can behave. It's, it's once you head down that path, you're headed down that path. And, you know, it's it, people like to talk about the slippery slope doesn't exist, but it does. Mm -hmm. The whole life is kind of prepared about the slippery slope. The consequences of an action lead to a, lead to a set of results. And that set of results leads you to go farther. It's just mm -hmm. how the world works. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very dangerous for us to accept the, the silencing of the well, and here it's, I think I, I absolutely agree. And here the ACLU used to be a bastion of protection of uh, people's right to express themselves. Um, and it didn't, and, and the more egregious the expression, the more they rolled up their sleeves and protected them. And uh, I don't know how recent it is. It's taken a number of years, but basically now they only uh, protect speech if it's left wing. I hate to call it liberal. I hate to call it progressive because it's really regressive. It's regressing to the idea that that uh, whoever's in power gets to dictate everything, and that people who aren't in power don't have any rights. And so uh, that slippery slope is is here uh, in the U.S. and it's embedded and getting more embedded. It's shouting down speakers. Um, at you know, universities are supposed to be uh, where where the places where thought is examined and where there's a rigorous discourse where you pull people's ideas apart and find out if there's any merit to them. And the only way you can do that is through discussion and having uh, people of varied ideas come in and speak and talk. So slippery slope is right. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you can't hear someone else's ideas, how are you supposed to? improve challenge and come up with new ones of your own it's you're actually quite frankly limiting your ability to progress through through society through culture and to become a better you know society it's just you're literally he, preventing he, yourself from becoming what you want to be Rich, richard was very deep in thought there for a while i'm sure he's coming up with something very cogent to say on oh you're doing a fine job john <laughs> no well we got 20 seconds richard you got anything for us uh be prepared for a long count. Be prepared. Oh, yeah. for a, I yeah. think that is probably the end thing. As we all, you know, we're recording this on uh, Monday. Well, you guys will see this on Thursday. And my guess is they're still counting. It took six weeks to get the final count in March. So it wouldn't surprise me if it takes a couple weeks to get the final count here. Yeah. And that is all swing states. We've got as much as 13, uh, the, as late as the 13th before uh, the ballots are all counted. Yep. And that is all the time we have today. Visit us at libertariancounterpoint.com. From all of us here at Libertarian Counterpoint, please remember to love everybody. Oh, thank you very much for the opportunity, James. I appreciate this is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint.